Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. We're going to go out to Brooklyn and uh, we're going to congratulate longtime Colombo mob figure Francis B.F. Guerra, who it was announced in court papers recently, as well as in Gangland News with Jerry Capace, that B.F. has gotten a button. Uh, it was a, something of a great debate, I think, for decades about why he didn't uh, have a button yet, because BF is uh, as close to the Persico family as possible. Best friends with skinny Teddy Persico, the uh, mob don to be, according to the government. He's being slated to take over the crime family when he comes out of prison in 2026. Uh, skinny Teddy and BF grew up together as close friends. And uh, then when Teddy had to go to prison on state narcotics charges um bf became a, a a bodyguard enforcer for his cousin or for for skinny teddy's cousin little alley boy persico who was the heir apparent to his father back in the uh 1980s and 90s and eventually got caught up in his own murder case and is not gonna um be coming home anytime soon so there was always the question about who was going to take over after uh junior persico died and and andy mush russo passed uh and it came out uh, in the last year or so that it's going to be skinny teddy uh bf has been around skinny teddy and the persicos his whole life he could have gotten button in the 90s during the colombo mob war where he fought on the front lines but uh according to sources uh According to him and other uh, government informants and, and people that were talking back then, he didn't want a button. Uh, he turned it down. Um, felt like being on record with the Persicos was good enough. So, you know, it, it's interesting. And then come the 2000s, you have a situation where he was going to get made. There was a ceremony that was in the making in 2010 that got called off. At, you know, minutes before it was supposed to start because of they thought possible uh, law enforcement scrutiny or a potential raid. Uh, then he went to prison, came out of prison in 2021. And according to these uh, recent court filings, BF got his button in 21 uh, shortly after his release from prison. This was the same time that the administration, Andy Mush Russo, Benji the Claw, Ralphie DiMatteo, and uh, Skinny Teddy all went down in a big labor racketeering bust. Mush Russo died in 22. We all know little Rob D'Onofrio is in the seat right now as boss, acting boss of the Columbos, keeping that seat warm for Skinny Teddy. But B.F. Guerra is now a made guy. And I would suspect he's going to be, I mean, it's, it's unique that, or I would say, not normal that someone of that ilk or that stature would wouldn't get made until he was 55 or 56 years old um some of that as we said was was his own choice but uh i would guess that he's going to be a guy that jumps from soldier into the administration rather quickly when skinny teddy comes out in a couple of years would not be shocked to see bf either be under boss or street boss if not in a couple of years at some point in the next decade. So BF Guerra has a button, according to the government. Um, last thing I'll say about BF, everybody loves him. Uh, he's a guy that is capable. Uh, never convicted of a murder, but is a suspect in numerous gangland slayings. A lot of them related to Persico family business uh, in terms of mob business and then family business in terms of family issues. Uh, I know that he's considered a suspect in the murder of uh, uh, Scooby. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting Scooby's last name, but he's the guy that gave up Teddy in the uh, uh, state narco case that took Teddy uh, off the streets for most of that Colombo mob war. He was acquitted of his role in the Joey Scopo hit in 1993, which was the hit that ended the Colombo mob war, uh, according to Federal witnesses, uh, BF helped plan that hit and then was sitting in a, um, a crash car monitoring a police scanner as the hit went on. Uh, his name came up in court documents again 
uh, or I should say his, the reason his name came up in court documents in the last couple of weeks was because of the trigger man in that hit, uh, John Papa, who was a teenage hitman who ended the war, killed Joey Scopo and is now doing four life sentences and is trying to get a compassionate release. And in the government's response, they said he's still in lots of contact with a lot of mob figures, including BF. Uh, but BF was acquitted of that. Um, and he's been implicated in hits related to Little Alley Boy's divorce, where the guy that was romancing Little Alley Boy's uh, estranged wife ends up dead. So, you know, he's a guy that's had his name bandied about, has actually, in murder investigations, has fought murder charges in court, beat him. And the last thing I'll say about him is it's, it's, it's interesting that his, his name came up as a, a major player in the uh, pizza sauce sit down of 2009, I think, where the famous L&B Spumoni Gardens in Brooklyn had their pizza sauce recipe ripped off by a Bonanno associate. Uh, the owners of L&B Spumoni Gardens had some financial backers. One of those financial backers, daughters, was married to BF, and BF took a crew with him to confront a guy named Gene Lombardo, who was underneath the, the Bonanno Calabrese crew, uh, Calabrese crew, uh, Peter Rabbit and Tony Rabbit, uh, and Frankie Notch, you know, a soldier, a guy, a very capable man in the in the Columbus for years. You now, smack Lombardo. Uh, they had to have a sit down at a Panera in Staten Island, and it all got resolved. Uh, people got paid money. I think BF got like two, four thousand dollars or something to for him and his his father in law to split up. But uh, it's it's just, you know interesting footnote in mob history. But BF Garris got his button. Uh, it seems like he will be a fast riser in the crime family pecking order going forward. OG Pod, Scott Bernstein, out. Thank you.